a lot here. So thank you for coming out. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we've been really active in social media uh, for a long time, really since about 2008. Uh, so uh, those of you who are, who are doing that uh, for us tonight, you're, you're joining a special family. Uh, we really like uh, to engage with you. We're glad that you're a part of it, and uh, thank you for being here. Uh, so I'll stop talking now because nobody cares about me. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on to our first, well, my wife does. Okay, thank you, honey. Okay, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll start off uh, tonight, uh, of course, uh, you know, we're, we're here to see 2001, a space odyssey, uh, deep space exploration, and uh, someone who knows a little bit about that is sitting directly to my left, the administrator, uh, Charles Bolden. Uh, a, a long time uh, marine aviator, but of course a four time shuttle, uh, astronaut, two time commander, and of course is helping uh, direct us on our next giant leap. And the big question that, that a lot of people end up asking us is, why Mars? Why right. Mars? And I'm gonna let Buzz talk about it as much as, as I, because uh, he and I have talked quite a bit about this topic. Uh, we both believe that, that Mars is the, what we call the ultimate destination for humanity right now. Uh, I have my granddaughter Michaela over there, and Michaela always cautions me that Mars is not the ultimate destination. It's intergalactic travel. But I say, Michaela, you know, I can only handle the solar system. <laughs> so Buzz started this when he and Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. And uh, as I'm certain he's going to tell you, uh, that step on the surface of the moon was intended to be a precursor for humanity going farther into the solar system. And what he and I would both like to really see is some of the young people who are sitting out here in the audience who are my granddaughter's age and, and like freshmen in high school and below uh, be among the first to take Buzz's place and set foot on another body off this planet. And so. Uh, that's ultimately why that is NASA's next destination. President Obama has made it very easy for us because back in 2010, he set it as an objective for us. The Congress of the United States, believe it or not, agrees with the president. <laughs> yeah. and in fact, uh, to, to demonstrate that they agree, they put it into, into the Authorization Act of 2010. So NASA has two big things we're trying to do. Our next small step is to try to capture an asteroid by 2025 and put humans with that in lunar orbit. Uh, we'll use lunar orbit and the infrastructure there as a stepping stone to get onto Mars in the 2030s. And that's all I want to say. Can we talk about that? We can, we can. You sure. can talk about anything you want to talk about. Yes, you can talk about anything you want to talk about. What, 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 one point though, when uh, often we're asked, you know, what's your favorite planet? And people will say Mars or Jupiter or whatever. <coughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> because we'd like to come back you, you know, like to make a round trip, but Buzz and talking about Mars, that's not necessarily the case in terms of pioneering the red planet. You're, you're not necessarily, doesn't have to be a two-way trip, does it? I want you to get used to these glasses, because uh, my son wears glasses, and I put these on, and I'm like, Jesus, I look just like him. <laughs> <laughs> But but I ain't gonna get a new pair of glasses like uh, like this. <laughs> Just for stand up for a second. Just let everyone think about that. So that everybody knows who we're talking about. Actually, make these for the kids to get them in the face. But you you you've really talked about the ultimate pioneer of Mars, which is go and stay. Uh, it <clears throat> could be called a settlement, mm -hmm. could be called a colony, but you know, I'll bet you that you could still call it a settlement or a colony by going there, coming back, going again, coming back, and then you say, you know, that's not a bad place. I, I think we ought to uh, settle it, right? Uh, so that's what settlement or colony means to me, that you can change your mind. <laughs> I, I uh, took, took the liberty of beginning to 
use one of Charlie's words a bit more of uh, pioneering, but I'm going to add it to my word of permanence, pioneering permanence. Now, you can ask a big company, Boeing, Lockheed, what's their plan to get to Mars? And I suspect I know what it is, because I know what some of the latest NASA design reference missions are, because I have read them. And it's not the way I see it. <laughs> I remember going over to Cam Cambridge in England to talk to Stephen Hawking. Name proper. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I had first met him when he was visiting Pasadena. Uh, and that was shortly after he had uh, issued a statement that said the Earth has about 200 years, as he sees it, for us to establish a off-Earth civilization. Now, I don't know whether he's talking about uh, pestilence, uh, nuclear war, uh, asteroid impact, or cockroaches. Take <laughs> um, but I went up to him and I said, you know, I, we can do better than 200 years. I think we can maybe 30 years. I recently have, have come up with a question and, and I would really like for somebody to tabulate an answer that makes sense. How many people do you think would be in a lander? Landing on Mars. On, let's say, uh, on the first trip, somebody lands. Put it out there. No, I'm, I, I'm asking you. Oh, you're <laughs> asking me. Oh. Well, since I have to live in, in within the confines of budgets and, <laughs> and other things that these folk know about, uh, I, you know, our plan right now is to have a lander that has anywhere from a crew of two to seven. And, uh, you know, and the question I would ask you to, to ask answers for some of the young kids is because they're going to eventually they're going to want to ask us about, mm -hmm. about robots because they're going to want to say, and I will ask the question for the young lady back here. Why should we go at all when we can send robots? And, uh, and I have an answer and I know you have an answer, but I think they'd be interested in hearing from you why you think it is that we need, why do we need robots? But why are robots not the ultimate answer for settlement on Mars? Uh, who is we? We meaning us, human beings. Why, why, do, why do we need to send humans? This is a question I, I get hit with all the time. Well, you know, as a NASA administrator, I, why, why do you want to put astronauts at risk? Now, we're talking about we, the United States. No, I don't. I talk about we as, as humanity. We talk about all right. this all the time. I don't. I, I, well, okay. I, I know I work for you all. <laughs> I seriously do. I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a civil servant. I work for you, but I think it's really important for most of you to understand that in, at NASA we work internationally and we we pursue the kind of stuff that Buzz really does believe in, which is uh, if we're going to go off this planet and settle other places, and the place that we both agree is Mars. It is going to have to be with other nations. Uh, the, I use the International Space Station as a great example today because it's many United Nations, and I, I think the, the the space station the, the space station is a model for the way that we could travel to Mars. Well, if if you really mean what you're saying, <laughs> and and I say we means the United States and you say it means the world, it must mean China that other nations want to go too. You're going to... Okay, so if, if we don't go, the Chinese are going to go. Right? Nobody's going to go if we don't go. 
the point that everybody should understand, we, we have a family family, we have a family family argument here. And because I, I really want want all of these folks to understand that we really are the leaders of the world right now in terms of exploration and science and technology development. And we are. No one who else has landed something off this planet? Who else is Buzz is the only person in this forum who has ever lived off this planet. There is one first person, you know, of the two surviving today, and that's him. And we are here this weekend to celebrate the 45th anniversary of his landing on the moon. And yes, yes. 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 